Hey guys, how's it going? It's Neon, and in today's video, we'll be going over the top 5 best PvP bloodlines in Shinobi Life 2. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to give a huge thanks to Planet Breaker for allowing me to use some of his gameplay in my video. So, go check him out. I'll be leaving his channel link in the description. Uh, also, one last thing, I do have a Discord server, so if you do want to join, I'll be leaving the link for that in the description too. But, apart from that, let's just get right into it. Now, coming in at the number 5 spot, we have Minikaze. Now, although there have been some changes to auto dodges, meaning that it won't track as well as it used to, it's still insane how this bloodline can track people even though they're using auto dodges and iframes. Also, apart from maybe like the first move, every single move is incredible still and can easily kill an unsuspecting player. It also has a somewhat easy to learn moveset, and depending on your playstyle, the first mode might be better than the second mode and vice versa. Um, it also has a half decent counter and plenty of large AoE moves. So this bloodline is really good against people that are using like large Susanoos like Indra or Kamaike Kuma since most of the moves stun them while doing damage. So if you do know how to use this bloodline properly, you can really get the upper hand on other players. Anyways, next up on the number 4 spot is going to be Boromaki Gaiden. Now in the gameplay I'm using Boromaki Shiki which is skin of the bloodline, all that means is that it has a different color and the effects are slightly different. Um, but anyways, Boromaki Gaiden is crazy good when it comes to comboing. Every single move, including the C-Spec, are all comboable into each other, so this is pretty similar to, you know, kind of like bloodlines like Ruskanichi. And another thing is that this is an EKG, which means that you can equip it to your left elemental slot, so uh, it allows you to integrate it more into combos since you don't have to give up your right slots, which are your V, B, and N slots. Um, but anyways, it deals a ton of damage and the combos are really hard to get out of if you don't have an auto dodge. Also, one last thing is that the counter is pretty okay all in all and is one of the best bloodlines in the game at the moment. And is one of the best looking modes in the game that also as well just happens to be one of the best player versus player bloodlines too. Now moving on to number 3, this is going to be Gatuga. Now this might just be a tad controversial because this bloodline is kind of hit or miss depending on how much of a good player you are. But skill aside, it's still a really good bloodline, especially in team battles because it can charge your chi and some your opponents for a surprising amount of time. Another thing is that the mode looks really, really nice, and overall the mode is also really, really decent just for PvP in general. Um, especially considering it's something that you can get from a boss, um, like as a boss drop. And another thing is that, similar to Boromaki Shiki, it is also an EKG, so if you missed what an EKG stands for, it's basically just something that the bloodlines or like the move set you can equip it to your left elemental slots, reserving your other slots for you know better bloodlines or better moves. Um, but anyways, back to my point. Uh, you have to be pretty decent to you know maximize the potential of this bloodline. But once you master all the moves, it's really incredible what you can do with this bloodline. Um, also, it's really fun to use, which is something that is often very overlooked nowadays in bloodlines. Anyways, now moving on to number two, this is going to be Kamaike Kuma. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, this in the number one spot can honestly be swapped depending on your playstyle, and one might be better than the other. But the reason that Kamaike is number two is because above all those other built lines that I previously talked about, is the third mode. Now, the third mode is insane for team fights, and you can find mo like you can literally fight multiple people at the same time while stunning them, keeping your distance, and also some of the moves, uh, steal your chi and give it to you. So as long as you can keep your distance and you know you keep on dealing damage, you can eventually just overwhelm like a group of even up to like three people. Um, but this does not mean that you're invincible using the bloodline. Uh, another thing is the first mode, it's really good for boss grinding uh, for human bosses, and overall it's a little bit better for PvP um, in 1v1 situations. But also another reason is the counter. The counter is insane. If you're using like a move like Pyromania, they're basically screwed. That's basically an instant kill right there. Also, the Q-Spec is a large AoE move for the first mode, and finally, you can also mode merges with like Shock Cloak to give you a massive movement uh, advantage. But yeah, honestly, I think that's why it belongs in second place. Now, before we move on to the number one spot, I want to give a quick honorable mention to Aizen. This bloodline would low-key be the best bloodline if this was just a spinnable bloodline. However, you can only get this if you get every single mask from every Gen 3, which is quite a task considering that they aren't that common. And also, Gen 3s are pretty hard to, you know, just fight on your own, especially if you're on your own and you aren't that much of an experienced player. Um, but anyways, as you can see by the gameplay on the screen, this is really a broken bloodline. Also, like I said before, thanks again to Planet Breaker for all of this. All the gameplay you are seeing is his, um, and he let me use some of it since I don't own Aizen. Uh, so go check him out. Um, but anyways, back to the bloodline. So the clones do an insane amount of damage, and this bloodline can't really be countered by other bloodlines apart from maybe the number one spot. But even then, you have to be really good with your movement and especially chi management. Um, because these aren't really battles of who can do the most damage, but instead it's like who can stay alive the longest and who can stay alive uh, while, you know, maintaining their chi and uh, especially health. Health is very, very important because almost all the moves deal like 
almost like a hundred thousand damage from this bloodline um so you got to be really good at that like i said movement and especially g management if you want to beat someone with this bloodline now finally coming in at the number one spot we have code gaiden so the reason that this is above all those bloodlines i previously mentioned is because this bloodline is really unique and this bloodline can actually put the cooldown on all of your opponent's moves including auto dodges um so if you combo them correctly you can prevent them from making any moves for up to a 50 i think it's like 15 seconds or something like that which doesn't really sound like a lot but most fights take about 30 to 60 seconds so you can have them stun and able to do like any moves at all for like 30 percent of the fight which once you do the math is quite a lot honestly but moving on from that uh the bloodline is just really good in general it has some really nice aoe moves like for example the uh c-spec it uh i think it just like triggers um basically they just kind of ragdoll they like slump over and does damage and also puts some of their moves on cooldown and then the weapon spec, or in other words, the e-spec, is a point and click that brings your opponent automatically to you and stuns them for a second. And now finally, what we really have to talk about is the counter. It is probably the best counter in the game, apart from maybe the Kamai Kekuma counter. But the reason is because the opponents instantly start to attack whoever triggered it. And not to mention they do AoE damage and they even follow you. So if you don't have like a movement jutsu like uh, Dagai Wire or the Water Dragon, maybe even Smoke, um, they will catch up to you. So just be very careful with that. And they also just kind of teleport to you if you're at a somewhat long distance. And they do all of that and they last quite a bit too. The counter doesn't have that long of a cooldown either like other counters. But like I said, once again, this bloodline is truly broken. And if you know how to use it, you're basically guaranteed to win. But anyways, like I said, this... Code Gaiden is truly broken. It's really unique that it can put moves on cooldown for up to a really long time. And the counter is probably the best in the game, at least in my opinion. But like I said, this entire list was completely just opinion based. So if you do disagree with me, just tell me in the comments. I might make a part two. You never know. Um, but honestly, depending on your playstyle, you might like Kamaiki more, maybe Minikaze, Aizen, or even Katsuga. You might like something completely different. You might prefer Doku Tengoku, or you might like, um, let's see, like Ryuji Kanichi. You might like maybe not even any bloodlines. You might like Gen 3s, maybe Gen 2s, maybe some uh, Dune Spirit Awakening or Heavenly Spirit. It's completely up to you how you play the game and how you PvP. Whatever works for you might be different for another person and vice versa. So I'm just going to wrap the video up and, you know, leave you on a good note. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to tell me in the comments. And if you want to join my Discord server, I'll be leaving a link in the description for that. Anyways, like I said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. So yeah, peace out, y'all.